Time to start our own drama channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hasn't the growth of streaming agencies uh, also led to an increase in scripting? Uh, yeah. No way. No way. No, no. Wow. What? No. <laughs> There's no way that multi-billion dollar huge companies that own talents and basically can only profit off of their success that now own these streamers would do anything at all unethical or illegal at all, ever. 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 They ever. just wouldn't no. because they have ethics and ethics comes before profits, guys. <laughs> What does scripting mean? Scripting means basically that... Um, <laughs> yes, that would be against the law. Several streamers, that would not be against the law. That would be just completely unethical. Like WWE wrestlings, it's fake. Well, at least the WWE wrestlings, you know it's fake. So, <laughs> scripting means basically that some IRL streamers that get into weird situations well, on their IRL streams, uh, well, it turns out that those weird situations weren't completely random and there may have or may not have been uh, <clears throat> pre-arranged with um, paid actors or not, mm. maybe. And now, again, this is completely unethical if it is actually presented as real, but I it's not illegal for the most part like i don't know as long as you're not scamming your viewers for money or something uh like i don't know it's as long like, as you don't yeah start we've we've seen things like agencies and pretty systematic like view botting and like twitter botting and stuff and considering they have contracts with so many industries and uh sponsors i think it could be criminal fraud so I think there is an illegal element here. No, uh, why? I think all of that stuff, everyone that does or says fake things has always the, the out of, it was just a prank, brah. <laughs> it wasn't real. Didn't you understand it was just a prank? I mean, I, from I a teleprompter, think, yes. I think as long, <laughs> I think as long as you don't make money out of it, like for example, I don't know, get arrested and then start a GoFundMe for your bail fund, and then it turns out you never actually got arrested and the police that were that arrested you were actual actors. What about raising money for a wheelchair when you actually can walk totally fine? Or that, for example. Which may have happened on Twitch. May or may not have happened on Twitch. And that streamer it, may it or may not now have reason in another platform because he came back to tweets and he was banned again. Um, so yeah, unless you're actually scamming your viewers for money, I don't think it's illegal. It's completely moral. Yeah, sure. Mm. He was back on tweets for a week or something. No, no, he and was people... back on Twitch and actually got like a decent viewership to the point where he got partnered under false yeah, yeah, pretenses not for a few weeks yeah and, and then, then people and people reported connected yeah people reporting to twitch that like this is not who you think it is this is the person you banned like seven years ago and then twitch instantly terminated his contract yeah you witnessed a miracle or maybe it has been a miracle yes or maybe he has a really good doctor i don't know <laughs> creep also that scripted stream from time to time he pretends to be playing hearthstone but he's actually playing last of us 2 totally <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I think that, uh, that, that joke would be better if I actually knew what... Uh, I haven't played Last of Us too. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm also pretty sure that there's a, like, a, a lot of these big um, like agencies and stuff, they create... Um, maybe they don't do exactly scripting, but they create like edgy personas for their streamers and their social media that are not like exactly, you know... Uh, they're, not, they're not representative of, of, of the streamers. Mm, they're yeah. just, uh, they know it will resonate with, with the audience, so they kind of just write up. Like, a lot of streamers that you know have other people writing their tweets for them. Tweets. For example. Yeah. That's not exactly scripting, but it kind of falls into that category. 
Hmm. Scripting is the least of it, I think. Uh, I think with ICE, some of the scripting involved like random people off the street, which weren't actually so random and would come on his stream and be like, oh man, I'm having hard times. And they would solicit donations and they'd get a lot of donations under the pretenses that these people are who they say they are, but they're actually totally just actors. So it gets it gets a little bit of a gray so area with wait, the scripting. There are agencies that work with streamers. You didn't know that. You thought it was just sponsors, and they didn't interfere. Are you serious? We are. Are you are you capping or are you really? We no, don't know. We are the only streamer. We're not the only streamers. Even like half of our size that are not owned by an agency that I know. No. Except for like Asma Gold and like. There are se there are uh, like very, very few. No, there are there are several big streamers that are not. We've had this discussion again, but let's have it again. Let me take a second to ask to answer a really good question. Someone, someone asked, what does owned mean? Okay, so think about it this way. If you are like a musician and a record label takes you, they own you. If, you, uh, if you're an... Uh, let's, let's, let's take a step back before okay. that. So there are two things. There are agencies, uh, there are influencer agencies, agencies that advertising agencies they're like more like it um, and then there are like management agencies so a lot of advertising agencies influencer agencies what they do is they just uh, mediate between sponsors and streamers so when raid shadow legends wants to run a campaign they contact one of these agencies oh, you have another campaign <laughs> they always have a campaign <laughs> They contact one of these agencies, they're like, this is the badge that we got. Um, who can you get us? How who many can views you get can we us get? Or how many views you can get us? Or what campaign can you run for us? And then those agencies contact streamers. Some of these agencies have streamers exclusively. So, so, so certain streamers just work with certain agencies. And some don't. But the job of these agencies is literally just mediation. So sponsors, Connect streamers, sponsors to streamers, they work out the details, they lay out the contracts, they monitor the execution because not everyone is as responsible as we are and yep. do their campaigns nicely, nicely. A lot of streamers are just completely like uh, irresponsible. So all they do, is, so the, the, the agency keeps them in check. Like, hey, today you need to know this, to do that tweet. This or level of you agency. you need to start at like 10 p.m. your sponsored stream and so on. This, this level of agency that she's talking about that is kind of like connecting the deal to the streamer, they're like a mid-level of taking care of things. Like they're not gonna like wake you up in the morning, tell you exactly what you need to stream. They're like, this, these are the things that you need to do no, for no, no. this they, deal. They don't do anything for your stream. They yeah. do things, they keep They uh, help facilitate the deal. Only One pertaining at a time. to that specific deal. Like that game, or that um, soft drink that you're advertising, or that chocolate that you're advertising, or whatever, okay? Yeah. So that's what they do. And the way they get paid is they get a percentage, 10, 15, 20, 30, around like that range, of the deal. Yeah. Like whatever uh, the company X that makes game Y paid, to promote that game. That's just it. And they'll take like usually a percentage. And the streamer gets paid the rest yeah. of the percentage. And from what, After you're from what done we've done, it's, it's a pretty fair breakdown. In, in, in our experience, it's pretty fair. It depends on the agency because like some they, do more they, they better do, work than others. They do a others, decent bit yeah. of work. And because it's all they do, they do decently in negotiating for, for rates. So it's, it's a decent so, deal most of the time. So after the deal is done, which is usually two, three streams, or sometimes a month, or depending on what the deal is, you're done. Like the, 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 until the next deal, right? They don't have any any power over your stream or, or anything like that. And they also don't now, don't like specifically care that your stream does remarkably well because if your stream goes to shit, then they, they can just pitch other, a deal to a different streamer. Yeah, exactly. Like they they, they have not really. A, they have some stake because they have those relationships developed, but they don't have much of a stake in the success of the people that they work with. So that's why they don't do anything like, you know, tweet for them, for example. The shit we were talking about, they don't... Yeah. This, these guys don't do anything outside of the deal because now, they don't have a stake in your content. Now, we work... We have 
worked in, for most of the deals that we do that you see sponsored, except for the ones that are through Twitch, like bounties and stuff, we work with these agencies. Yeah, we work with agencies like these. Okay. Now, the whole other kind of, of agencies, like management agencies, are literally the same um, uh, agencies that work with singers, that work with actors, and some of these agencies are actually the same. Yeah. Like, the same that manage Hollywood actors, and so on. Yeah, like billion dollar companies, the same. Yeah. Like, they have huge amounts of money, and they expect massive returns, and the way they work is they own people. They own everything. It's like, it, it, it's, it's similar to how like a musician would work. You saw a lot of the DMCA stuff. Some of the musicians were like frustrated that they couldn't get copyright for their own songs, shit like that. There's a lot of frustrations like these that happen because they literally own everything that you do for the most part. I, we, we have not worked with these agencies ever. We have been asked, we have been pitched to sign with one of these agencies, but we haven't. With at least two of the big Hollywood agencies, we have been asked to sign, but we haven't. So, um, so we don't like um, know exact numbers and stuff, but we do have a very good idea from others that have signed uh, with these agencies what they do. So what they do is they care to manage, to ba basically make you more successful. Uh, because the way they get paid is that they get a horizontal cut of everything that you make. Horizontal cut, means everything, off the top. The cut It's is, like a royalty. At least that's what the deal would be for us. Um, and that's why they, they work for your entire career. Uh, the cut w would be significantly smaller, it wouldn't be like 20%. Uh, it would be smaller, but it's everything: subs, donations, advertisements. Yeah. Like if you give uh, if, if you give streamer DAs, A owned everything. by if you give streamer A owned by Giant Media Corp from Hollywood X Y Z. If you give him a hundred bucks, Hollywood Company X Y Z, thirty bucks in the pocket. Yeah, it's basically a percentage of the gross income. So that you make. their stake is a hundred percent on you being popular. So these companies, yeah, try to make their streamers as popular as as possible, and these companies do, in many cases, create personas for their streamers that may not be exactly reflecting of who the streamer is. These companies have, for example, media people or social media like experts that write people's tweets yeah there's some people who have oh, huge twitter accounts yeah. that we know don't tweet much at all of their own tweets just people don't even realize it because there's like professional people to manage social media accounts for them is that crazy like you, you you might you might think you're following a streamer on twitter and you're actually following some hollywood twitter manager who manages like five accounts yeah um <laughs> and obviously these people are, are good enough to do it in a way that it fits the streamer's persona it's not corporate and so on. We have also been told by many people that have signed by these agencies that they are, they started being very happy because they were treated like Hollywood celebrities and they were like, and at the end, they ended up being not very happy with these agencies because these agencies were pushing them into things that they didn't really want to do or they didn't feel like doing. They basically did not have, they have signed over <coughs> their career and their online like existence yeah. for several years with these agencies because they were pushing them to stream to stream in a specific way to interact with other streamers in a specific way like they just they, they, have they, they literally manage an, a every part of your life like they they really push and leverage things in order for you to stream like Rania said certain amount of hours certain amount of days um, if like yes, this is public info. This is I have said nothing that is under NDA yeah. or that is not known. It's just that info that uh, no one cares to look into that much because meh, whatever. Like it sounds people terrible. just watch. Well, well, it sounds terrible. It is terrible for the streamer, but a lot of the streamers have become from like nothing to huge names, and it also has become. It has been the opposite too. We know streamers that 
were able to break their contracts and leave these agencies because these contracts have usually a specific term or they have like you know you can give your notice and uh, break it for after a few months and so on we know of people that broke their contracts and and went back to being like not no one but like like half the viewership and, and, and i'm sorry it's not it's not bad to say no one Big because streamers, because we, without him i have no one when oh, it comes on. to viewership no, my point on. is when it comes to to popularity when it comes to actual viewership like no one is no one um i'm sorry it sounds very bad to say it i'm talking about being from very low popularity to becoming like stars and then there were people that broke their their um cont their um Contract with media Contracts companies. With these media companies, and they went back to having way, way, way lower popularity. And like, for example, that, that's a, I'm not gonna say names because those those stuff may be under NDA, but you can look like there, like I don't know. Can you think of big streamers that um, nothing else seemingly changed in their lives, and suddenly their viewership like Doubles. significantly? No, 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 dropped. I would say. Oh, and then drops like a year later. Well, to like exactly where it was the year before. Yeah. So you I, might you I, might be go go and and try and find out if this happened to these streamers. You and might, might you be thinking, why are we talking about this so much? So now we circle back to the unethical bullshit that goes on. Now, if you're a gigantic billion-dollar company that owns a large part of the you know personalities and influencers of the world, well, it's suddenly very convenient to view bot the people that you represent. It's suddenly very convenient to Twitter bot the people that you represent because, you know, they already have good content. If you just multiply their viewership and interactions by double, right? If it ever comes out, well, you know, some employee did something. Oh, it's, it's not the streamer's fault. No, it's not our fault. We fired the guy, right? You have this like perfect system of doing illegal bullshit uh, or certainly unethical bullshit. And uh, yeah, when when you own the streamer and when you have this um, this interaction with them, where you get a horizontal cut of everything they make, your whole stake is on their popularity. Certainly, this shit happens. And I mean, obviously, again, we're not saying names and stuff because we don't have proof. Because uh, if we did, we were already have have. But there are certainly indications. There are there are two ways you can artificially. Um, uh, like have higher viewership. One is view body and is completely against the US. The other, and it's cheap, the other is not against the US and it's not something you can do all the time. And like we have, like we have had, and it's usually something you disclose, like, like we have had this on MTG, for example, not on the regular MTG streams, but like I remember at least once that he was asked to do an MTG on some kind of release. And, and in the same campaign, it was also Noxious, um, yeah, Savis, they, they I believe. Yeah, they paid for ads and on they, like a bunch of gaming yeah. websites. And they specifically like actually told us, like to tell people. Um, and like I know, I know that MTG does this a lot for their um, also, like their competition streams. But that is one, uh, not um, against the OS. And two, it's, not, it's, it's not even super unethical. expensive. So that is not something that you can do all the time it's it's this is literally a advertisement yeah. you do it once yeah we and that's it we've looked you into that some... a lot and uh what, what ends up happening is when when these when these like ad pieces happen uh again we've done them through mtg a few times you actually keep a number of the viewers yeah. after they push you for advertising so it's clearly people watching Okay, so I up. wanted to close up the conversation about like the the big uh, companies that own like honestly from from the circles that we're part of the majority of streamers. Um, it's not a huge majority, but I think it's more than half. Anyway, um, so people are like, why would you want to be part of these organizations? Why would you want a company to take a horizontal cut of everything you make? The reason is. The, the way that they put it is they're going to do such a good job of managing your content and promoting you that you're going to make way more. And I mean, honestly, and in some cases, this is true. I think this is true for many yeah. cases. You just kind of give up your control over your own content and stream. Yeah. 
At the same time, though, I have to say from what I've seen of people who signed up to these, their channel growth is guaranteed. And the reason I want to I want to frame this is I'll put this in. I'll actually I'll actually give them give them. Uh, 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 I'll use the example of Tempo Storm. So from my understanding, Tempo Storm did everything legit from my understanding. OK, and a lot of people would join Tempo Storm and Tempo Storm would try to make them better streamers. And some of them became bigger streamers and some of them didn't grow at all. And some of them, maybe for whatever reason, their streams actually shrunk. You know, that's kind of how things you would imagine would work, right? They're given like advice, they're trying to make you better, but at the end, it's your responsibility. At the end, success is not guaranteed. From what I've seen in the majority of these giant media companies that take over streamers, success is somehow guaranteed, which is why it makes it so fucking suspicious all the time. Also, we have personally had, I don't know, acquaintance, maybe we'd call him a friend, who signed up to one of these after we had a conversation about pretty clear evidence that they were view botting some of the people who are working for them and basically just signed well, up anyway well no we, we don't we don't have there is no evidence like let's let's be clear clear in indication Indications. indication like we, we literally have had one person of that of those agencies telling us i don't fucking know how i got that many views on that right they were like a bit tipsy at the tweets party um so I don't know when they tell me that they don't, they have no idea how they got that many views. Well, I don't know. But yeah, you basically it's it's a system that it's really sketchy, and a lot of streamers sign up for it know exactly what they're signing up for. Okay, it's a very it's a very competitive industry. What about starting your own agency? You already manage one streamer. That's not. I manage him because I love him. I managed you. You love because, me? Yes, I do. Confirmation. Can there we go. No, sir, because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I do really uh, It's not something that I like. I, I I love doing. You know, it's my passion of doing. I'm I'm amazing at it. Scripted. But it's not, uh? Scripted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazing at it, but I don't. It's not my passion, especially for streaming. Like and for, with him. I, I love him, but I also can kick his butt. It's not easy. You kick my butt. It's my my part too. I listen to shit that you say. No, I, I know, I know. Not I know. everyone is, is able and to take criticism. And he's also a very a very responsible person, right? Um, it's not very easy. I, I said it the other day. Sometimes um, managing streamers is like herding cats or worse. And I know that because back in the day, a few years ago, I didn't manage streamers. But I organized like Silent Stone, a few other tournaments. Yeah, we organized a number so of events and tournaments. I had this kind of interaction, not for their entire streaming career, just for them to actually fucking do the setup, follow the rules, uh, show up on time, and do what they were supposed to do. And not with everyone, but with, with some of them, it was extremely difficult to do it. They're just not there. They're not like responsible enough to know what they have to do, when they have to do it. So it's just not fun, not very fun. No, the, the, the dumbest shit we had to deal with was, was in the WCA tournament when Trump missed his flight by a that's day. That's true, that's true. But that was also early yeah. on. Um, I, I love the guy, but like mm -hmm. real life is, is at least was not his forte at that time. It was it was a tournament uh, in China. It was really huge. It was like the biggest tournament uh, up until its time, actually. And uh, uh, Trump, prize, prize wise. Yeah, Trump and I. It was an invitation. Trump not, and I were not... casting it, and um, he showed up to the airport one day late because he didn't realize the time difference from traveling to China. Like he only looked at when he was landing. Basically, he's like, "Oh, I'm landing there. Flight duration this. Okay." Yeah. She was up at the airport one day late for his flight. And our implication with that was that he was casting, and they had asked me because um, there were very few people speaking English, uh, and they were very valuable um, to the organization of the tournament. Um, they needed to get more people to manage traveling details and everything for the international players so they had asked me because i would i was already involved with uh, like um 
his involvement in the tournament to do that basically to just do be a liaison for the international players and like gather their travel details their travel preferences make sure like i communicated to all of them whatever they communicated like to me basically a point of contact for them yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think the other dumbest thing, I don't know if you were there, uh, Reina told me this. Um, so Gara missed the flight. Do you remember when Reina told no, us No, we were there. We were, oh, there. We were there? Okay. And Gara lived like five minutes from the yes. airport. <laughs> so Gara missed the flight and Reina was really furious with him. They ended up paying for a new flight, so they didn't miss the tournament. She didn't miss but the tournament. But Reina was really furious because Gara lives five minutes from the airport. He literally can walk he to the airport. He lives like very close. I don't know. He's he was late minutes, and missed his flight, airport, living yeah. five minutes from the airport. G Gara is so pure. He's so he's so pure. <laughs> I, I miss not seeing him for a very long time now, because he doesn't play Hearthstone. Like does he? Oh, Reynad so. mad. Imagine that, dude. I'd be probably pretty mad. Well, back then, it, Reynad basically had to pay because Gara was on Temple Storm. Uh, yeah, I think Reynad was was paying the bill for flights. Was, yeah, he had to pay the bill of the flight.